Number of family fallout shelters planned or begun in our town in the last two years, 189. Number completed, five. Some say it was apathy, indifference. Others say it was all that talk about standing at the door of your home shelter with a gun and shooting your neighbor down if he tried to get in. That didn't sit well with our people. But the coming of the National Shelter Survey and the idea of finding community shelter for everyone seemed to put the matter in a brand new light. Schools, hospitals, commercial buildings, apartment houses. 168 potential community shelters which could accommodate our entire population, plus any additional shoppers or workers who might be in the area during an attack. The hypothesis then, Mr. Mayor, is a nuclear attack. William Albermile Groves, senior member of our Common Council, and one of the town's most trusted and respected citizens. That is the hypothesis, Mr. Groves. The use of private structures will, of course, be up to the individual owners. But people like school trustee McArdle have allowed the government to survey their buildings, to mark them as shelters, and to stock them with essential supplies. Well, don't make a hero out of me, Mr. Mayor. I was opposed to the idea at first, but the people in my building wanted a shelter, and uh, I wanted to make them happy. It was just good business. Well, underneath it all, people like to know that there's somewhere to go if it happens. A bank, a store basement, a school. Why a school? They're located where people live. They're usually the most substantial buildings in the neighborhood. And the children are there during most of the daylight hours. That's a quarter of your population to begin with. Will the doors of these shelters be thrown open to everyone? The schools always did belong to everyone. Who uh, administers the shelters? Not only is this not a matter for the schools, but in times like these, I can think of no more futile, negativistic approach than burrowing into the ground and at these staggering costs. We can raise the money and do without furniture, books, a cafeteria for grammar school two, more teachers for grammar schools three and five, where we already have more than 40 pupils in a class. We want them to be 40 live pupils. I want them to be 40 live pupils too. But I deny the issue is survival. We all believe in working for peace, but that doesn't mean we can't take reasonable measures for defense. What is a reasonable defense against total destruction? Tell me what will be left for those people when they come up out of their holes. Shall we begin with life? Thank you. Well, I'm sorry Mr. McArdle's out to lunch, but I'm sure I can help you. I'm flying to Capital City next Monday. I, uh, I want to pick up some travel insurance. Mm, certainly. That's uh, Monday the 22nd. Yes. Mm -hmm. Round trip ticket? Yes. Now, who do you want as a beneficiary on this? Mrs. Alice Groves. 29 Cedar Lane. Travel insurance? Yes. Good policy. I'm sure it is. Why did you do that? Simple. I don't want you to waste your money. But you said it was a good policy. Do you realize what your chances are of being killed in an airplane crash? No. About one in 350,000. Practically negligible. People are killed. People are, that's true. But chances are not you with odds like that. I'm sure you can find better ways to spend your money. Well, George, I'm not doing this for myself. Yes, you mentioned your wife and child as beneficiaries. Don't they love you? Well, of course they do. How much? Very much. Well, then, if you got killed, chances are they wouldn't even want to go on. Absurd. People have to go on. Even H-bomb survivors? All right. You've made your point, but my time is limited, so if you'll please get a new application. No. I wasn't fooling. I'm not going to sell you a policy. They sell them out at the airport, George, in machines. I only came here out of friendship. Show friendship to the people of this town. Give them some insurance. Fallout decays rather rapidly after a nuclear blast. Seven hours later, radiation level is down to 10% of the original level. Two days later, it's down to 1%. Two weeks later, down to one-tenth of 1%. One which means that the first two weeks are the critical ones in which to be sheltered. 
assuming, of course, that you have survived the initial explosion. The first sign of a nuclear explosion is a blinding flash of light. That means about three seconds before the heat or thermal wave. During those few seconds, you should try to get away from windows and behind something solid. That would minimize the burn effect, which lasts about five seconds. Then you would have about one minute to seek maximum cover before the blast. If possible, go below the surface of the ground. After the blast is over, the fallout will not begin for at least 30 minutes. Time to reach a shelter where you can remain for several days. How do you know when to come out? In a private shelter, you'd be notified by radio announcement. In a mass or community shelter, the director would tell you when it's safe to come out. Suppose the director doesn't get to the shelter in time. There's a regular chain of succession. That's all worked out in advance by the community. What if I'm in one shelter and my husband's in another? Is there some way we could communicate? Are you sure he'd want to, Harriet? <laughs> there would be regular radio broadcasts with news of survivors and outside conditions. What happens when you come out of the shelter? Is there anything left outside? The fact that you've survived the initial blast will mean that a great deal remains outside. There'll be decontamination teams trained to clear necessary surface areas, such as stores where food supplies exist. I've been sitting here for 15 minutes listening to you, and I'm appalled that you would lull these people into a false sense of security. I wasn't aware of any lulling. Well, you gave me the impression that we would be safe in these so-called community shelters. Safe from fallout, yes. Is it not a fact that blast and fire are by far the most deadly of all thermonuclear effects? And that when the bomb hits, our homes will be pulverized? That would happen within a few miles of the burst, in a direct target area. I'm speaking of places where there are survivors. Do you mean to imply that we would not be a direct target area? I don't know whether we would or whether we wouldn't. Not a direct target area with our up-to-date chemical plant in our modern county airport only two miles away? I can tell you from reliable sources that the enemy wouldn't have enough weapons to hit every plant and every population center in the United States. And I say we're a prime target area, sir, and that nothing can save us. You're making a lot of assumptions, sir. I'd like to point out that... May I have your attention, please? Please, may I have your attention? I would like to answer the gentleman's comments, if I may. Your remarks are familiar to me. I have thought them myself. I have felt them myself. The feeling of futility, of doom. And I have felt the opposite, too. The sureness that it could never happen. That it was much too horrible to happen. Then one day, I realized that these two apparently opposite views had much in common. Both led to complete inaction. Both allowed me the leisure of doing nothing of my unique predicament as a 20th century man. I had faced two possibilities. World peace and world destruction. I... Uh, I was notably reluctant to face the third, the possibility of a nuclear war in which some will survive. The most difficult of all to face because it requires intense preparation, sacrifice, money, for a day we hope will never come. If it doesn't, and the world is spared, who will care how much these things have cost? If it comes, and we are ready, then whatever we have spent beforehand will be cheap. You might say, uh, a form of insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I ask your assistance in financing the construction of shelters in our public schools. Tomorrow morning, I shall propose to the Common Council an ordinance by which the town corporation will share with those civic groups who wish to contribute the expenses of incorporating shelter facilities into our public schools. 